Ready to go. Alrighty, ladies and gents, episode four, season two. Season two, episode season two. four. This is good, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> good topic, good topic. Strength versus endurance. Uh, I'll just let you open up with this one. What do you think? Strength, yeah. The, uh, I don't think they're different. A lot of people say strength puller, endurance puller. Mm -hmm. uh, my contention is your, your pullers with good endurance are just your stronger pullers. Mm -hmm. um, usually an endurance athlete, like a runner, a swimmer, they're able to exert over long periods of time, low levels of force. Yeah. If you're running, your legs are lifting your body weight. They're not, your legs are not lifting a one rep max, yeah. 10,000 steps. They're lifting their body. They're lifting 1% of their mm -hmm. one rep max. Yeah. Um, if you increase your force, your ultimate force, your one rep max, your endurance naturally goes up. Yeah. If, yep. if I curl 200 pounds and you curl 250 pounds, mm -hmm. I can probably hold 100, 100 pounds for say 10 seconds. But since you can curl 250, you probably can hold it for 12 seconds because you're exerting a lower percentage of your one rep max than I am. Mm -hmm. So um, the ability to hold a sub maximal weight for a long time will naturally just go up when you increase your your maximum weight yeah training for endurance i think is stupid <laughs> well, okay I, yeah. I think if my one rep max is a hundred pounds i wouldn't i don't think i would ever have a reason to say gee i'm going to start pushing up the amount of reps i can do at 50. Yeah. or i'm not or i'm yeah. not going to take like yeah. half my weight this goes into isometrics, which we covered mm -hmm. in the one of them. I'm not going to go take half my weight and then just hold it, which basically turns into a very slow eccentric motion. Yep. And eccentric motions are what make, make you sore. Mm -hmm. Now, you might, if you did half that weight and pulled up against a chain or something that stopped, you're only holding 50 pounds, but that chain's tight. You don't know what you're actually lifting. You might be lifting 90% your one rep max, 70%, yep. you, you, you don't know. Yeah. That will generate endurance, but you use isometrics to push your one rep max up. Yeah. Use isometrics, use anything that jumps your one rep max up, anything that increases your absolute force or power will increase your, your endurance just comes along for free. Your endurance is just the ability to hold sub-maximal weights for a period yeah. of time. Because ultimately people see you as uh, as an athlete that has immense endurance. I've heard lots of people describe you as you've got amazing endurance. Because they don't want to call me strong because I have no hand. <laughs> <laughs> that would be too much of a compliment to somebody who disregards all yep. that top rolling philosophy. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's just that they can't overwhelm your one rep max on that that movement. Yeah. That it appears that you're strong. And we, we get stalled in some awkward position. Yep. You know. And it's not in the vec in our either one of our prime vectors, but if I can hold, if we're at a hundred pounds, but I'm holding 105 and you're holding 100, that five percent advantage mm. means a lot in seconds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I mean, arm wrestling is a, it's a strength sport. Uh, it's a combat sport as well, but it is primarily a strength sport. It's, it's not a strength sport, but it's a very isometric sport. Yeah. It's not a rep. Sp it's locking something in and then bending at the waist. So yeah. you're not your ability to rep your elbow isn't as important as your ability to lock it in and then use your torso to generate what would time. you what would you say about um i think what people see as endurance is often as well um affected by position and efficiency um like take a devon larratt style arm wrestler he he puts himself in a position where he's actually uh, not working michael todd another guy i've seen michael todd literally just looking like he's doing nothing but yeah, he's he, stopping but no one can get through right he'll he, entirely rest he's in a yeah because he's in he's in an awesome position for him yeah he's on way on his side of the table so you're fully extended chasing him yeah right and he's not trying to move yeah he's just he's just playing rock or yeah. oak tree you're the one that's bashing <laughs> up against it you know trying to move it yeah. you know when he has to move he moves yeah but usually when he moves i mean it's a, like, I mean he goes from this to a yeah he he moves 300 pounds along to me that is a very inefficient way of pulling because yeah. you're taking your 
300 and some pounds and moving it as far as you possibly can yeah, from fully spot. extended to on top and yeah. <laughs> a far more efficient way would be to leave that arm like it is yep. and pin it that way, move very slowly. But, he, I mean, he's playing a, uh, it's like an ambush or it's, it's, I don't know why they call it a king's move because... Yeah. Unless kings run all the way back to the castle and hide in it until the enemy's tired and then comes yeah. out. It's more like a possum I, move. I'm pretty sure Derek Smith actually coined the term. And uh, I, don't, I don't know the story well. he messed well. it all up. He's like, yeah. That's a stupid name. <laughs> I agree. I, I thought it was named after George Zakowicz being King George. Um, and the fact that oh. no one could pin him. Well, we called something. him Crazy George yeah. when I grew up. Yeah. So. So, but anyway, but yeah, endurance... I. Like everyone's got their a ratio of fast twitch, slow twitch muscle fibers, and some people are more offensive, some people are more defensive due to their genetic makeup. Um, I think that's like within that scope, there are people who are just looking for a catch and then they know that it's on, and there are other people who just know that they have to kill in the first one second. Yeah. And those are all strategies. One thing, though, for endurance is, and I hear it at matches all the time, people lock up and they're not moving, right? And they're, they're just grinding out, but it's basically a very static. And then you hear your, your, yeah. your crews behind you, breathe, breathe, breathe. No, <laughs> when you are doing isometrics, hold yeah. your damn breath. <laughs> Do yeah. not grab a grab yeah, something, chain it to it the go. floor, lift it up, and then start trying to breathe and see how long you get. Versus yeah. just hold your breath and, yeah. and lock into it. Yeah. Do not breathe when the match stops. That's not the t the time to breathe is afterwards. <laughs> you no, know, hold and that so, breath and grind it out. And if a match is going longer than you can hold your breath you see athletes sipping on breath like they don't let the full yeah exhale happen Do what you, just but the smallest breath possible because everything's got to be tight you got that yeah. your whole back shoulder your entire torso has to be tight yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and i mean often that's that's a mistake that you see among uh amateurs as well is is often the best time to hit is when this guy takes a breath as soon yeah. as he breathes you go oh thanks for the opening <laughs> right <laughs> But yeah, well there you go. Oh, I agree. Endurance, way, uh, way misinterpreted by a lot of people who watch the sport. Um, it's almost an indication of force, and yeah. not a standalone uh, property of your own ability. Yeah, yeah. Well there you go. So there we go. Todd Hutchins uh, is, has no endurance. People, he's just strong. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a bit.